this piece is part of Surrey Unearthed, which is a programme of 10 artistic projects taking place across the entirety of the Surrey Hills area of outstanding natural beauty um, for over a year. And this is my work, which is entitled Fossil Ocean Floor. Um, and it's a text piece in the landscape, as you can see, um, and is a specific alignment in the landscape, which um, changes as you move through that landscape. How did you decide on the text? So I've played with this uh, concept of what's called a heteropalindrome, a word that is a different word when it's spelt backwards, and I've played with this kind of alignment. So in other works, in landscape pieces, and in um, gallery pieces and more sculptural, intimate works. Uh, I've played with this idea of um, aligning the letters of such a word, one behind the other in an exact alignment. And as you pass them by, you see that alignment from two different angles, and you also see the intriguing sort of crossover point where it becomes completely abstract. And what it does in your perceptions, it appears to spell out two different words. So from here we see the word animal, um, but as, the, uh, as you see it from a different angle and as, as you move through the landscape, from the other viewpoint, from the other side, it looks like the word lamina. So lamina means a, a layer of sedimentary rock. And so to me, those two words sort of encapsulated this idea of chalk being just a, a, an incredible mass of microscopic fossils. And what about the, the typography? Um, you know, What's the relevance of that? What's the significance of that? Yeah, so this, this, uh, the letter forms are, are created with a, um, a font that is a, a five by seven dot matrix text font. It's an alphanumeric display. And what's interesting about that particular display technology, which is very, created very early on in the history of computing, um, is that it's simply a grid of dots, five dots wide, um, seven dots high. And with that very simple grid, it's incredibly economical. In its context here, in relation to the chalk escarpment of the hills behind us, um, they can represent the microscopic constituents of the chalk. So I wanted to also use this font to reflect the chalk on a macro scale at the level of the landscape, so the word in the landscape in relation to this hill, but also at the microscopic level, at the level of w at which the chalk is actually constituted. Is there an element of disguise to it? Because obviously it does look digital, but it, like you said, it, you know, it's quite a, a manual process. It's just painted wood. Yeah. Um, but you look at it and it could be on a screen. Yeah. Is it kind of playing with uh, what we see and what we believe we see? And Definitely. I mean, I'm interested in the artistic genre of landscape you know, as an image, as a historically, as a as painting. So the idea of when you're sitting on a train and there's this landscape going past, when you're involved with transport technology that conveys you at a speed, suddenly uh, what is beyond the window pane feels slightly unreal. And this idea of the landscape rushing past, sometimes it can be extremely picturesque, and I use that word advisedly, like a painting. Um, so part of what I wanted to do was create an intervention in the landscape which produced a momentary, a transitory experience, a visual experience. So very much so, I'm interested in it being like an image. Mm. So the way the colours, uh, the colour of the structure was researched was to produce something that was low visibility with the variegated greens that are behind the letters. And of course, in contrast with white, which is you know sort of the the, the, the most reflective colour, um, but that also refers to ancient chalk hill figures in the English landscape as well. So there's this kind of connection between things. Do you feel like if if you think of the landscape as an image, do you feel like you're almost reappropriating the landscape or subverting the landscape? Yeah. I mean, I think the idea of placing something within the landscape that's just kind of popped up and is there and, and is a kind of curious phenomenon, mm. that's very much um, uh, connected to an idea of the artist as someone who disrupts things. So for some uh, 
people this may be a kind of disruptive intervention and for others it's a kind of heightening of the um, picturesque qualities of the landscape because of course this landscape looks the way it does because every square inch of it has been managed by humans for thousands of years. There's not a there's hardly a, uh, a patch of um, earth in the UK that has not been tended, managed and affected by human inter intervention. So the idea of putting something into that and highlighting its pictorial qualities is also a comment on the fact that it, this is actually an artificial landscape. This is not a wilderness. Mm. In contradistinction to, you know, uh, let's say, land art in America of the 1960s where uh, there's this kind of idea of the, the pioneers discovering a true wilderness for the first time in the eyes of a certain view of history um, and sort of responding to that wilderness. This is not that at all. This is responding to a man-made environment. Mm. Because there's, for me, there's two different ways to experience this. There's the, you know, the, the physical experience of looking at it, photographing the work or videoing the work and then posting that on social media. So there is yeah. almost a, a filter there, yeah. which is quite interesting. There's kind of um, two ways to experience it, physically and digitally, which in a way is almost a metaphor for the piece itself. Well, that's nice. And it's also, yeah. it's also kind of a metaphor for the, the way we live right now. Mm. So young people who are digital natives live on the internet. They live mm. digitally. Uh, whereas people from an older generation go on the internet rather than existing on it. And that train that was just gone past has you know, this kind of glass window. It's, a, it's an artificial atmosphere and people glimpsing this way will have noticed the transition point where the two, um, where the alignment uh, crosses over. Uh, and that's taken about 15 seconds to experience that. So that's allied to the kind of scrolling, you know, slew of images that, are, that pervade our lives, mm -hmm. right? The core of my practice is drawing and painting in the studio and um, investigating ideas of what it means to depict and what a picture is. Um, and also how that is described and defined, especially in relationship to the idea of an image, which I think is something different. For me, a picture is something that's handmade. Um, the original meaning of the word picture is the concrete process or result of drawing and painting. Um, whereas an image can be uh, def defined in various different ways. There are scientific image production technologies which create images that we look at in a very different way than we'd look at uh, something that's handmade, whether it be you know, um, an observational drawing or a, a sketch of an idea that's completely in the artist's head. So uh, this work relates totally to um, the other works that I make, which investigate sort of the, the core question for me, which, which, which is um, what is a picture and how is meaning created? What's very interesting about the Surrey Unearthed project as a whole is that there's a variety of projects and each engage with the idea of natural, the natural substances of the landscape in a very different way. There are completely different art forms. There are, of course, different minds looking at uh, different things and coming up with um, different solutions and different interpretations. But also there's been a lot of public engagement projects. Uh, and what becomes apparent when you do something like that is how uh, education about where we are, why it looks the way it does, uh, and um, how people interact with the landscape, use it uh, and abuse it, uh, is something that's really important to be communicated. So our own impact on the landscape is something that perhaps we're not as aware of as we might be. Mm. And so uh, it may be a disruption, but it may also be something that draws people into considering something other for a moment. You know, my mission as an artist mm. is to say, consider this phenomenon. Mm. 